If the book gets out, he's broken the law, and I would think that he would have criminal problems. This is the book that President Trump does not want the American people to read. And maybe he's not telling the truth. He's been known not to tell the truth a lot. John Bolton is the highest ranking official to write an insider account of his experience inside Trump's White House. Why is this the book President Trump doesn't want anyone to read? Because this is a book of facts. So why wouldn't President Trump want to know about those facts? Because I think it shows a pattern quite contrary to the image he would like to convey of a decisive president who knows something about what he's doing. Bolton has been defined by fierce ideology. He was once ambassador to the United Nations and served three previous Republican presidents. He is an aggressive promoter of a hawkish, strong projection of American power around the world. Many of us thought that Bolton going in with that portfolio, there could be some conflict. On April 9th, 2018, Bolton started his job as Trump's third national security advisor in less than 15 months. Breaking right now, John Bolton is in. Good news as national security advisor. John Bolton's the right guy at the right time. I think he's going to be a fantastic representative of our team. He's highly respected by everybody in this room. You are going to do a fantastic job, and I appreciate you joining us. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. But John Bolton is about to join a revolving door of advisors. Let's go back. So you walk into the White House. You'd worked for three other presidents, both Bushes and Reagan. What was immediately different about the Trump White House? This was not like a White House I had ever seen before. Uh, it was not functioning uh, in the same way as any of the three previous presidents I had worked for. From his first day in office, Trump was a president unlike any other. We are not going to let the fake news tell us what to do. Unpredictable and often incendiary. If you're not happy here, then you can leave. That's what I said in a tweet, which I guess some people think is controversial. A lot of people love it, by the way. Donald Trump is a reality TV star turned president of the United States of America. He likes the TV moments. He also thrives on chaos. Is that your Bible? It's a Bible. Even the daily schedule at the White House was unorthodox. What most people found striking was that Trump's official day didn't start until almost lunchtime. Trump was not loafing during the morning. He talked to all manner of people. Who were those outsiders he was listening to? I don't really know. I think they were friends. Sometimes he would say a very wise person told me X or uh, somebody who really knows this stuff told me Y. What were his briefings like? Was he reading his briefings? Well, my experience was he very rarely read much. The uh, intelligence briefings took place perhaps once or twice a week. Uh, is that unusual? It's very unusual. They should take place every day. The president should read extensively the material he's given. It's not clear to me that he read much of anything. There was just a, uh, an unwillingness on the part of the president, I think, to do systematic learning so that he could make the most informed decisions. I'm a very stable genius. The president has referred to himself as a stable genius. Is that what you saw? Really? Well, how can anybody call himself a stable genius? He did say it a couple times when I was in his presence, and I just uh, didn't react to it. You wrote the president was not just uninformed, but stunningly uninformed. Can you give us some examples? Well, there were things that we went over again and again and again that just didn't seem to sink in, like why was the Korean Peninsula partitioned in 1945 at the end of World War II, and what did that lead to, and how did we get to that point? You say in the book that Trump asked General John Kelly, if Finland was part of Russia? He said those things, absolutely. And when you're dealing with somebody who asks questions like that, it's very hard to know how to proceed. Would you say anything to him about this? Well, you don't, you don't uh, necessarily say to any president, you know, Mr. President, you really got to buckle down here and do your lessons. So, no, I didn't do it that way. But certainly uh, tried on a couple of occasions uh, with, I think, success from time to time. From the beginning, the Trump White House was a family affair. Both his son-in-law, Jared, and his daughter, Ivanka, hold key positions as his advisors. They even have a disparaging nickname. They call them Javanka because they're sort of seen as one in the same. Somebody once said to me, in the Trump White House, there's family and everyone else is the help. 
who held the most power in the White House? It varied from time to time, but I think the sustained answer to that question over time uh, is Jared Kushner. Thank you, Jared. My star. He is so great. If you can't produce peace in the Middle East, nobody can. Jared Kushner deals with everything. Think about it. When it comes to Middle East peace, Jared, you deal with that. When it comes to dealing with China, Jared, you take the lead on that. When it came to the coronavirus pandemic, suddenly there he was again. Jared Kushner has a very broad portfolio. Is he the most qualified person for those jobs? I don't, I re don't really want to get into the, to the family aspect of this. The focus ought to be on the president. But if Jared Kushner is the second most powerful person in that White House, why can't you answer that question? Well, I think uh, a question I would put in turn to conservative Republicans is, how do you feel about that? While reluctant to get personal about the Trump family in our interview, Bolton did share a story about the president and his daughter after news broke of Ivanka's private email account. Ivanka Trump under fire, accused of doing exactly what her own father campaigned against, using a private email account to conduct government business. You share one story of how policy was essentially shaped to protect the Trump family interest after U.S. intelligence reportedly determined the Saudi crown prince played a role in the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. Trump issued a statement, you say, to divert attention from Ivanka, who was getting press for her emails, her private email account. Well, the president said that. Now, in fact, he also strongly believed in the statement that he made about U.S. policy vis-a-vis -vis Saudi Arabia despite the killing of Khashoggi because of the arms sales relationship and other things. But it was very much on his mind that day that his daughter was taking some heavy hits in the press and absolutely guaranteed this diverted everyone's attention. And he said that? Yes. But what's garnered a lot of attention is Bolton's assertion that he saw a disturbing pattern behind the president's decision-making process. You say that you were astonished by what you saw. A president for whom getting reelected was the only thing that mattered, even if it meant endangering or weakening the nation? Well, I think he was so focused on the reelection that longer-term considerations fell by the wayside. There was considerable emphasis on the photo opportunity and the press reaction to it, and little or no focus on what such meetings did for the bargaining position of the United States. Are you saying that all decisions the president made were driven by re-election? Thank you very much, El Paso. Thank you very much. I didn't see anything where that wasn't the major factor. So a lot of people have complained that he has a short attention span and he doesn't focus. I want to say when it comes to re-election, his attention span was infinite. It's just too bad there wasn't more of that when it came to national security. You described the president as erratic, foolish, behaved irrationally, bizarrely. You can't leave him alone for a minute. He saw conspiracies behind rocks. He couldn't tell the difference between his personal interests and the country's interests. I don't think he's fit for office. I, I don't think he has the competence to carry out the job. There really isn't any guiding principle that I was able to discern other than what's good for Donald Trump's reelection. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.